everyone, welcome to Mills Meets, a brand new web series where I meet right here in the Phoenix studio, local talent from Essex. And today on the sofa, we've got a rapper from Romford, it's yeah. William Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thank good, you. How good. are you? I hear you had a long walk. Yeah, it was not the best journey, but we made it on we made time. It. You're here, we made that's it on what's time. important. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right, so to kick off the interview, I like to ask bit of random questions yeah. just to get to know my guests a bit better so i've got some would you rathers for Ooh, you okay so i love these so the first one's quite long but would you rather remember everything that happened in your life mm-hmm. including the hard times or forget everything that's happened in your life including the good times remember everything even yeah. if it was bad because i think you could even learn from that and i could go future reference but oh yeah don't do that we were stupid that's very true yeah. very true nice well that. done um okay this is quite a funny one <laughs> would you rather smell your own fart or someone else's my own i say <laughs> I, I, why is that i have to tell you i think i prefer my own stench rather than, <laughs> rather than someone else's but you could walk away from someone else's yeah yeah depends how detailed you want to yeah, go yeah it depends how <laughs> what you've eaten as well doesn't it yeah i think if you had like brussels sprouts christmas time it's not yeah, a pretty sight either no, way no. No. <laughs> fair enough i've got no sense of smell so i wouldn't be able to smell either Mine's not great either. So yeah. I think either way, I think my own, but yeah. plenty of someone else's, like you said, just walk away. But I'll yeah. go with my own. At just the it off. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> whiffed it for everyone else's pleasure. <laughs> and the last one of would you rather's, would you rather have an easy job working for someone else or work for yourself but work really hard? I think I know what you're going to say with this one. Work for myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I tried the whole work with someone. is never really ended great. Well, my last job was great, but when I was at a... You know, a window selling company. I was that guy selling windows at 10 o'clock at night. Everyone like, Do you want hates. a window? <laughs> I, I lasted a day there. That didn't work. I walked yeah. into the, the next day. I was like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> I'm leaving. And then after that, you're kind of like, what do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> well, you were a really hard worker. Like, I'm yeah. work and you're constantly yeah, yeah. working on the I'm time. always doing stuff. Um, am tiring, but, you know, yeah. I prefer to be busy rather than having a lot of spare time and doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You get bored then. Yeah. You? Yeah. I get bored pretty easily. So I always yeah. got to make sure I'm doing something new or trying out new things. Cool, sounds good. And we are at the beginning of the year. Have you made any New Year's resolutions? <laughs> um, two. Uh, w- one was, you know, swear less, which I'm doing well. But I don't do good. that anymore. No I, swearing today. I'm, I'm ret- <laughs> I've retired. I've retired. <laughs> and the other one was like, quit smoking. Because I'm, I'm only on two a day now. So I'm a pretty yeah. bad smoker. Even yeah. it's bad either way, but, you know. How are you doing? Good, good. good. I've had nine today. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've had... I've had uh, one, so that's oh, all right. Good. Well, yeah, I'm getting there, I'm getting keep there. Keep that up, keep that yeah. up. Yeah. And um, music-wise, obviously, mm-hmm. you're a rapper, you're yes. here to talk about that. Have you got any goals for this year that you want to hit? Yeah, to bre- I don't know, branch out more, I think. Um, because like, a few years ago, well, I think when, when I last sat down with you, like, I turned down way too many opportunities because I was very anti-everything. I think that was kind of the issue of, if you have someone approach you, you should be like, oh, you must be doing something well. But I never really saw it. I was just like, nope, not doing it. But I think this year I'll just like take everything I can type of thing. So give everything a try. Yeah, sounds good. So yeah. any open door. Yeah, I'm yeah, open anything I'd, I'd be open to, but within reason, of course. Yeah, of course. But um, I, I think the issue with me was like, where I've done everything on my own, I've got that mentality of I've done all this on my own, I might as well keep doing it on my own. Yeah. Are you scared that if you get other people involved, they'll kind of take over your own? Yeah, that's, that's happened in the past. So I've had opportunities with like, you know, like certain labels or wherever they you know the creative control aspect. We've never yeah. been able to agree on it. So they go, like, oh, you need to be like, I don't know, UK's Macklemore or GEZ or whatever it may be. I'm like, nah. Because yeah. <laughs> you've got a, quite a strong ethic that you, you want to be different. Yeah, you, I, think. I think I've always had that different element. Cause like, like a certain like, rapper, most of them do look, no offence to anyone, but stereotyped. Yeah. So it's like you've got the chains, women in the videos. I've completely the other end of the scale. Like, I think the, the main draw for me is because I don't look like them or I don't act like them. Yeah. Like, in, in the street, you would, no one would ever guess I do music or rap. I look like an everyday guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty good yeah. attitude to have, I say, because it keeps you grounded that way as well. Yeah, definitely. Which is good. So, staying grounded, but what would your musical highlight be? Like, where do you want to be, like, in a few years' time? What would be the top of your Ooh, musical career? I think I'd be happy with just doing it full time. Like, regardless of what position I'm in, I think if I'm able to make a wage of it, I'd be more than happy. But I never really got into it for that. I never thought I'd still be doing it. Like, I was like 18, 19, when I was yeah. pretty late on, to be honest. Like, most people. Started like 15, 16, and they kind of like, you know, kind of, they stopped doing it over time. But I kind of just kept going because I think the past, what, the first open years wasn't very good. Like all the music I look back on was cringing. I'm like, no. Yeah, that's the same for everything though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, you learn, I think. Yeah, so definitely. I think um, even like looking back at old music I've done, I think if you can pour away 
a negative and turn it into a positive, then you've kind of done something good. Yeah. So. So did you say it was 18 that you kind of started rapping? Is that when yeah. you knew you could rap or did you... No, kind of um, I think I was with Jordan, funny enough. He's over there. Um, Jordan behind the camera? Um, he was on uh, Over the Park with my... Like, that's a normal day. And he had Skrillex on. Like a, he went, I'll rap to it. I was just like, no. And I was just busting out something. I can't remember what it was. It was something terrible, I bet. You should have recorded it. Uh, oh, yeah, we <laughs> recorded everything as well. So we yeah. should have. But at the time, I was just like messing about with it. And over time, I think... I saw it more as an outlet for expression because I never really had any, you know, ways to, like an outlet for any type of expression. I always kept everything to myself. Yeah. But I think music was the main thing. I was like, all right, I can put whatever, anything bad and make it into a positive and maybe we could relate to someone, which I think all the topics I choose over music, it's never been um, your typical subject matter. I think I always had to like delve into something new or like yeah. something personal, which is good. Because you do a lot of personal writing yeah. and you like to relate to other people. So what, what do you think has been the best advice you've had musically? And I what think, advice would you give others? I think it's something that my brother said. He says, because he used to do music a lot. He went to stay true to yourself. If no one gets it, then it's their fault. Yeah. Which yeah. I, at the time, I was like, well, no, because I want people to get it. So I used to like, kind of like, looking back, kind of like, false this. This is what I'm talking about, just in case you're confused. But now I just kind of like, mention it. I don't know, it's all like, it's like a puzzle. I, th- I say you always got to, um, you know, have a plan before just doing it. Which yeah. was before I used to release mixtapes, EPs, just like on the daily or weekly, you know, kind of things. But yeah, I think that advice was like stay true to yourself, and you know, if if you don't believe in it, then no one else will. Yeah. So and early on, no one really got it. I think only now is people starting to take notice. A few people, like, oh, that's what he does. Yeah. You know, something different. It's good bit of advice. It is. And th- yeah. So that's musically, but what about generally? What's the best bit of advice you've ever been given? Can you think? Oh, I don't know. Um, my dad actually, he goes, um, being a good talker, but it's knowing when to shut up. <laughs> is that the shout out to dad? Saying, you talk too much. Yeah, <laughs> and then I could talk my way out of a situation and talk my way self into another situation, <laughs> which is not ideal. But have yeah. you known when to shut up? No, oh. <laughs> it's a well, learning it's progress. Good for this interview, because yeah. we want to know a lot about you. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you're listening to other music, who mm-hmm. features in your playlist? See, that's... <sighs> so, even though I do rap, I don't really listen to a lot of current rap. But I listen okay. to like, a lot of Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Johnny Cash, like, old school music. Not I'm, what you would expect. I from love. A rap. Oh, I love Oasis <laughs> like, a lot. Like Liam Gallagher's like, the man to me. <laughs> but even rap wise, I think. I've, the first, the first album I heard was uh, Fix Up, Look Sharp. You know, like Boy in the Corner by Dizzy Rascal. Yeah. Now, that was the first, and my brother got me onto Eminem. I've done my research, and, you know, I think I've always had a varied um, music taste because of my background. My dad was always blurring stuff through the speakers, which, you know, like the Beatles, and all. I kind of grew up with it. Yeah. Yeah, my brother's always been doing music, but they went a different path, and, you know, I stuck to my own little rap side. Yeah, with so elements you kind of got a musical family? Yeah, well, um, I think my brother's, uh, one does drums, one does guitar, and I never really thought I would do it because I was always very active. I always used to play football. That's what I used to do. Yeah. And yeah, over time, I think um, no one really showed me the basics, even to do music, like record music. I kind of done. My brother downloaded the program for me, and then he kind of just there you go. To do it. Yeah, and there's a lot of mistakes. Yeah, like, I didn't even know how to do like mastering, mixing, nothing like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's still a work in progress. There's a lot of work in progress. <laughs> what exactly is that? Is that um, so, the beats? Yeah, so it's like kind of like making sure it's the right sound. So you've got all these equalizers and some of it I just don't even know. I just kind of mess around <laughs> with it over the best. Like, but you learn, don't you? Yeah, yeah, of like. course. Um, and you mentioned sort of like Eminem and Dizzy Rascal. Are they mm. the kind of people that influence your style musically now? I think there's a lot of elements. It's like my voice is very Essex, so I ain't going to like. Obviously, yeah. it is. <laughs> well, we're from Essex. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, some people don't really like the accent. It's like people, oh. I've had a, someone commented on my Instagram ages ago, like, oh, I don't like your accent. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you oh, can't exactly change no, it. No, play my mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I forgot what the question was, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, who influences your style? Yeah, so, I don't know. I think um, through the rap I listen to, it's a lot more people that had me for this, a lot more American rap. Mm-hmm. I don't rap in an American accent, but I think even star-wise, like content. So I like a guy called Joyner Lucas, and he does raps about everyday situations. Yeah. So I think mine's similar to that. So I think that, and like a lot of Green Day. I, I took like the songwriting aspects, or like, yeah. you know, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day. Yeah. Like, the lyrics, and all that, it's very straight to the point, whilst I used to waffle. 
So I think by listening to all these musicians, you can kind of learn like how do they do this, how do they do that, yeah. or why, do, how do they get their point across without even mentioning it. So it's I quite think interesting how you can. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, okay. um, how you can like use different genres to even though it's yeah. people would just think, oh, you're a rapper, you just listen to rap. Yeah, I think I've, I've always had that, and in, even people I went to school with, they were still like, oh, he raps now. What's he doing? He's, he'd be that weirdo listening to Green Day. I was like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, but I think um, I've always stuck to my roots with music. I try and branch out and listen to like modern music, but some of it I just can't. Yeah. Can't listen to. I just it doesn't relate to me. That's fair enough, and that's kind of kind of the point of music, isn't it? To relate. Yeah, to I think enjoy. if there isn't a meaning to it, then what's the point in it? And I think that's a lot of issues with. That's why there's a lot of rappers I don't really like. <laughs> yeah. No offense, like everyone's got their own little thing going, and respect to that, but. If I don't really connect with it, I'm like, eh, it doesn't do nothing for me. Yeah. And this is a tough question next. If music didn't exist, what else would you be doing? I don't know. Um, I've always been, after like, even if I did music, it flopped. I think video, some aspect of video. Yeah. I'd say maybe YouTube or something. But then I tried that. Won't really much. <laughs> Everyone got offended. No, <laughs> A lot. You know, um, you go to the, you pay for video to get viewed and yeah. mine always got demonetized through the whatever, content doesn't match their criteria. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, ah, oh, stick to music. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Can't You're go wrong. You're allowed to swear in that. Yeah, like SoundCloud, there's no restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you first came in earlier, you did a performance for us. You did a freestyle. I did, yes. We're going to watch it now. Oh, lovely. People keep on telling me to sell out. And now my inner demon's creeping out. I'll smash the lights out, that's a blackout, walk into the madhouse where good really comes out. I'm a unheard discovery. I'm expecting Nathan Drake to pay me a visit, spot the differences in delivery, I state again, it's all about image. Me annoyed equals the illest. It's a return of the villain. I will allow these words to digest, you're looking at the future king, like hell I'm satisfied being the prince. Fake apparently appeals, explains why Will doesn't appeal. I'll say bye-bye to the innocent mind of a one of a kind, go hide behind a certain time to rub about drive-bys. I'll see through a disguise, or the sea of lies, manipulate the rhymes before I enter your mind, destroy every rhyme one line at a time, escape a nine to five by the time I'm 25. I'm like a fine wine, paint the image inside of my mind, no time for a rewind. I guess I'll just take advantage of the time in my prime. What? Did you plan uh, that before you did it? Or? Um, I think there's always elements of stuff I've done in the past, and I kind of mix it with new material, whatever comes to my head, really. Because yeah. I've, when I, even when I first started doing it, I always used to, like, I saw it as an art form, so it's like thinking on the spot. But then just doing it with words in your head and the sound of out loud. I never saw it as a big deal, but everyone's going, oh, no, that's really hard to do. That's I can't impressive. do that. Yeah, like not many people can do it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, so I'm good at something. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are really good. And you've had some mixtapes out already. Yes. And you was going to have one called Cabin Fever out in December. Yeah. Tell us what happened, because it was a bit of a delay. Uh, there was a lot of, like, I was meant to put it for a label. And there's a lot of differences on sounds and, you know, like material wise, where I've recorded like, I think it was, 45 songs so oh. I showed them every single one and the ones I didn't like they're like yes that one's been on that one's been. I was just like nope so I think it was just more creative difference yeah. and I think because I was I didn't sign with them but I was affiliated with them a lot so I had to make sure like is it you ain't gonna like sue me for releasing it are you? I didn't sign nothing to making sure <laughs> that's more the, the business side of things I had to make sure that all that was in order before just releasing but um, I had time to like change bits and bobs on it so changing songs I weren't really 100% sure about yeah. so I wanted every song to be like oh wow he, he can rap <laughs> but not just like every song's like a oh I can rap look at me type of thing yeah. so I've always liked to have meaning to it I don't think you have to worry about people thinking you can't rap because you can <laughs> yeah I do alright I do alright <laughs> <laughs> very modest <laughs> and you mentioned there like they were kind of choosing songs for you but yeah. when you do your own mixtapes you have so many songs how do you choose what's going to go on each one um, I think by the concept of it, I never really done a, an open project for anything, even though it's called a mix home mostly, so I've not got a concept to it to most of them. But I always like to have a meaning to each one or having a diverse sound, so I'm making it all gel like one to ten or whatever it may be. But um, it's funny because the last song I recorded was like the first song for it, and oh, yeah. I started recording it, not this Christmas, just gone the one before, so I've just dropped Young and Infamous. Um, I had nothing really going on in my life, so music was just pure. So I ended up recording a song called Missing Peace, and that's like really deep. So I was really in two minds about releasing it, because it's like a new side to me that no one's really okay. knows about. Yeah. So I was just like, I'm going to throw it out there. So you're not used to going deep in your lyrics I, I, I think there's always been an element to it, but there's like levels to it. I think yeah. by giving more details about a certain situation, it opens you up more. I always think 
if I had a disagreement with a rapper, I'd be like, there's diss tracks, oh, they've got more material on me now. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't happened yet, thank God. Hasn't happened. Good, good. So tell us a bit more about Cabin Fever. What are kind of the topics and messages that you're seeing um, out through that? I think the first song, like, it sets the tone for um, what I was feeling for th- at that time. I think it was recorded throughout quite, about six months, so it's different times in my life where some of it was good, some of it was bad. I think that reflects on the music. So I think you can tell where my head was at at that time while I was recording it. Yeah. But I like to... Um, I've done a song, it sounds really nerdy, it sounds out loud, but I've done a song about Star Wars and it's called Sith. So it's like the dark side, obviously. It sounds really nerdy, it <laughs> sounds out loud. But um, it's about, like, obviously, like, you know, you've got the, whatever they're called, obviously Sith, and it's like the, the characteristics. So I wanted to match that with mine. I was like, oh, at the two, I'm probably more similar to that. Because I was watching uh, Phantom Menace. Not a very good film, but it's just on TV. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's how I get inspiration from, like, wherever I'm watching. I was yeah. like, oh. So yeah. What kind of films are you into as well? Then? Mostly action. I watched yeah. that new uh, Hitman Bodyguard film with uh, Samuel Jackson. That was pretty good. Nice. Can't wait for Deadpool 2. That's the one I'm like... I'm not seeing the first one, actually. I think it's what? because I know how rude it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, I'm it, too good for that. <laughs> yeah. Sure you can get edited version somewhere. Yeah. be like, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of bleeping. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of scenes cut out. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's be the credits that. when they roll. <laughs> so going back to Cabin Fever, you've mm-hmm. had quite a few um, reviews and critiques. Has it yeah. been received how you want it to be received? Yeah, I always like to hear people's opinions on it before I release something. Not just though I can just change everything. It's more um, like people that's into rap. What do rappers think of it? What do these other people think? And someone that's not into it, just to see like there's elements. I like the instrumentation to it. Yeah. So it's not just the rap in itself. I like to like, all round. So like the quality of it, go to all these different people. But yeah, again, it's just it's learning. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm just like you know, I'm a student. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's quite a good way of looking at it yeah. because you are still quite young you've still got like a lot, exactly. a lot to go and yeah I think for for my age um, you know I put a lot of music out for my age but 2017 I realised I need to release one song oh, really? Did you yeah. <laughs> in 2016 it was uh, I think it was like 48 wow yeah, so it was only one. <laughs> yeah I was like I looked back I was like what happened <laughs> there they go. but still I think um, by like making it all like, I wasn't just making like Cabin Fever I was making another one that's like it's really technical to explain. It's meant to be called the butterfly effect. That's what it meant to be called, like cabin fever. Okay. But I changed it at the last second to cabin fever because I was like, oh, because I was, I was broke when I recorded it. I won't go in now. So like cabin <laughs> fever, you're stuck in. So I was like, call it that. That seems fitting yeah. for that time of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. And when will people know when it's going to be released? Oh, see, I was still in two minds. It's meant to be released in, I think it was 20th of December originally. And I kind of cut ties with that label. I was like, no, it's not working out. So I may be, I'm looking at March. Okay. I'm going to drop a single end of the month, probably. That's called Burning Down. So I'm going to put that out. And then I've got a video shot for it. I've had a video shot for it for the past four months. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, I've, just, I've had so much material. Ready, just, yeah, well, yeah. With me and Jordan and whoever, like, we shot videos. I've edited them, but there's some of them that's like, nope, don't like it. I'm really yeah. fussy. I was going to say, you're very really particular fussy. about your work, aren't you? <laughs> I am, I am. It's like, if I don't feel like it's, it's good enough, I just won't put it out. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough. You've got to be happy with your work. Yeah, like, I've, putting something out I've recorded time. over like a thousand songs, probably like bits wow. and pieces. I think out of all that, I've released not even a hundred. That's crazy. So in the somewhere in the vault, I've got <laughs> my first recording sitting there. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. And if people want to follow you on social media, so they know when your music is out, mm-hmm. what's your deal? Um, Twitter's at will underscore b one hundred and one. My Instagram is william underscore brazier. YouTube and Facebook putting william brazier. My, my face will pop up somewhere. <laughs> I can't remember the, the long URL for it. Yeah. Just Google it. And yeah, it'll be there somewhere. <laughs> and what's your plans for the rest of 2018 then? So you've got um, coming up. Yeah, I want to release two projects this year because I, I think I let myself down in 2017. I think I let, um, you know, outside interference get in the way of it. So yeah. I've had all these people getting involved. And I realised I was the only one sitting there like, nah. So I think do what's best for me and yeah. keep you know, stand true to myself and just do what I keep doing. But okay. I think I want to start doing shows and more videos is like the, the must for me. Because yeah. yeah. you haven't done much live performances yet. Not really, no. That's, that's your plan. No, that's the most good. daunting one I'd done was that school one. I went to uh, Wells Park School and then um, my boss who I work with, he's a governor of the school. Okay. So I went down there, I was like, all these kids looking at you, everyone's like, rap, rap. I'm like, all right, <laughs> chill. So I, had a play, I got distracted playing football with them. And I went to the assembly. I teach us rapping a lot. It's really? crazy. Wow. And, and it, you taught them to rap as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, so um, I had to do like, a little workshop. I felt like a teacher. Oh. It was great. So Mr. I had Brazier. to. Yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> Mr. Brazier, can you help me with my rap? <laughs> so I was sitting there just like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. And then they were actually pretty good. I, I was pretty surprised. I was like, oh, wow. 
You could be a teacher. If yeah. Music fouls. <laughs> you go, you got yeah, I've, got, I've got a backup. <laughs> but it's the kid's energy. Like, I weren't expecting like that type of reaction because usually yeah. you get that like, one kid that like, you know I'm not doing it. I was like, no, it's actually it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. I guess because rap is so modern and like yeah. in today's world, isn't it? The kids that age I think are it's something, listening to it and singing it anyway. I think regardless of what type of rap, there's always going to be one type of rap that you could relate to, regardless if it's like life rap, money rap, whatever it may be. But I think that's what's good about rap. It gives a good way, even for kids to like, express themselves. Even like council estate kids, like they're doing it. Like Grime, for example, yeah. a few years ago, Grime wasn't even looked at, but now it's become such a mainstream yeah. thing. Yeah, it's good to see. Yes, yes. Yeah. You like Stormzy? I do. I I, to be honest, I never used to. Really? Yeah, like when I heard Shut Up, I was just like, uh, it felt like getting shoved down our throats a bit. Yeah. But when his album came out, I was really impressed because he weren't, as much as I love his grime like, music, I, I think I liked the. You know, it's pretty soulful. Yeah. I'm like, Blinded by Your Grace, it's a great song. Yeah. yeah like, Laid Bare, like, that's yeah. a good song. I think he's personal, so I didn't really know much about him, but I think after hearing that, I was like, oh, respect. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah props to Stormzy. Yeah. Shout out to Stormzy. Yeah, shout out to Stormzy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So before you go, every time I do a Mills Meets, I like to get someone to try and break a world record. Ooh, ooh. Um, I just want to say this isn't an official attempt. We don't have an adjudicator. This is just for fun. Um, so you've chosen to do the post-it note challenge. Yeah. You? So I'm just going to read out what the rules are mm-hmm. and then we're going to get set up. And you're Sounds good. Do that. Are you Sounds excited? Good. I am. Have you ever done like a world record before? I've done a YouTube video like two years ago and then I ended up pulling my hamstring by doing... Oh. I tried... <laughs> I think I tried doing like a handstand, but I landed really awkward. <laughs> I, I've, I've kind of went, I've done it. No, I didn't. That's bound to the floor. Ooh. My brother's sitting there with a camera. Like, oh, yeah, that's good footage. I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> Send it on, you've been framed. Yeah. It's I would have got 200 quid out of that. <laughs> Will is going to attempt to do the most post-it notes on the face in one minute. You've got to be 60 because a 22-year-old American girl did 60 on her face in 2016. So you've got that to beat. So let's go through the rules. All of the post-it notes must be attached one at a time to the skin on your face. Overlapping of the sticky part of the note is not permitted. It's got to be on the skin. Once the one minute is up, all of the notes must remain stuck to the face for a minimum of 10 seconds. I've underestimated this challenge. <laughs> You're not as confident anymore. No. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to time you. So we've got 60 seconds. We've got yep. post-it notes all set up here. Lovely. Are you ready for this? I am. I need okay. a countdown. Ready? In three, two... One, go. Okay, so oh, is that... Oh. <laughs> One down. I hope you're not too sweaty, because... Oh, gosh. Push it on a bit harder. Oh, there we go, there we go. Totally got this. That's it. One. I've left this up big time. Oh, 15 wow, seconds already. <laughs> 15 already? Oh, it's got a small face. I have. <laughs> okay, this isn't going well, is it? <laughs> we should put some glue on the sticky notes or something. 27 seconds, yeah. nearly halfway. I've got them falling off. They're not very good, are they? They're in the system now, punching. All right, I'm on the Okay, if you don't do this, we'll blame the sticky notes and not you. <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll attempt this again, maybe. All right, on the oh, the beard's working, the beard's working. Oh, oh, oh maybe not. Okay, you got 10 seconds left. Why don't I still try it? I'm still down. <laughs> down. Five. Four, three, two, one. Stop. Well, at least you gave it a go. That's the important thing. How are you feeling? Disappointed. I blame these. I, I blame them too. I'm sorry. It wasn't, it wasn't my technique. <laughs> so that was Will's attempt at getting sticky notes, sticking sticky notes on his face. Let the team down. I've let the team down. Oh, you got four. That's not too bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Will, thank you very much for joining me here in the no, Phoenix no, FM studio. No worries. Thank you. And, um, yeah, just remind us, what is your social media if people want to follow you? Uh, Twitter at Will underscore B101. Instagram, William underscore Brazier. And the rest is just William Brazier. You'll find me somewhere. Cool. Well, thank you very much. And thank you very much for watching. I'll be back next month with another local guest.